All right, let's get this show on the road. Um, for anyone joining on Twitch or seeing this afterwards on YouTube, uh, thank you for joining. This is our uh, our badge weekly badge meeting, um, or as I've been calling the <laughs> the video series, the Badge Life Diaries. So, why is it saying I'm offline? I'm not seeing me stream. Hold on, let me refresh this. There we go. <laughs> it just took a minute to refresh. Um, are you able to see the stream? Okay. So we have um, lots to go over. Um, one of the things is the Blue Team Village badge that I've been working on. I got prototypes in. We're going to review those and um, we will uh, go over some of the corrections that need to be made and we'll actually make those corrections live uh, later in this stream. Um, but some of the other things that, that we need to cover are the um, Cowboy versus Dinosaur badge. Um, we need to, to get art going on that. We have the uh, basic badge shape, I think, nailed down and we can review that. Um, then, uh, as far as other stuff, we have, I don't see um, anyone from the Indiegogo uh, volunteers, so we might skip that. We were going to talk about our Indiegogo campaign for our badges, um, but I might wait uh, for um, uh, Rex or um, uh, What's his name? I forget his name. <laughs> the, the guys that volunteered to do that. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait for them to, to join. Maybe I'll follow up with them later. We have plenty to go over without that, so that's fine. Um, so yeah, I guess we will start with the Blue Team Village badge, because that's the most exciting thing. I want to start with it first, um, at least the review, and we'll go into the updates uh, after. So if you can see my screen, um, what I'm sharing is the, um, uh, the actual uh, PCB layout of the camera badge. And it is not a camera, it will have a screen um, and uh, basically show pictures where it normally would take pictures. Can you hear me over here? Ah, uh, yeah, I can. Can you hear me okay? Okay, I can't hear anything. Let me fix that. Yeah, I hear you fine. All right. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess let's get to the reveal. I got these uh, yesterday. Um, and we have the PCB way box. And it's reveal time. Dun, dun, dun. I'm in the weather today, by the way. I am too. That's why you got, you'll have to forgive me if I have a coughing fit. Yeah, me too. Here they are. Let's actually get this box out of the way so I can show them off a little easier <laughs> all right so this is the the PCB that we got and you can see the uh, the cool silver um, art on on there this is a capacitive touch button up here there's one down here and there's one over here so, so we'll have three buttons that you can press and the rest of the silver is just for art um, and then we have the sponsors gray log so I did their logo in uh, silver and, and silk screen and then the other side you can see the um, mask voids for the LEDs to, to light them up and the layout of the components and then we'll get to what one looks like fully built so here it is in its glory just running some test program so the screen's not doing much, and I should turn this off so you can see it light up. See, it has blue LEDs all around the edges. Oh, it has cool, neo pixels in various places, and then you can see this button is going to activate the camera flash. <clears throat> so yeah, that turned out like good, it. but we have a few issues. Um, so one of the issues is the um it's hard to tell on this view so i'm going to pop this off but i had to do this footprint myself because i couldn't find a footprint for this um display 
and I screwed up when I did it. And I think I know what happened. I had it right at one point, and then I was moving around with silk, and I must have moved the actual um, pin holes at the same time I was moving silk. So what happens is, if you can see the line underneath it, it's about three millimeters too high. Actually, about two and a half millimeters too high. So it's off center. Um, then, that, So that's one issue that's easy to correct. I can just fix this footprint and then we'll redo it and the holes will be lower where they need to be. Second issue is I was going to use a rubber band to hold this battery in place with these um, little holes that I had here and here, similar to what I did on the Future Badge. But these holes, because the Future Badge was different, it had a big opening and in that big opening I was just kind of doing a hook so for this I didn't have the hook or the big opening and I was just guesstimating the size of the hole I would need and I guesstimated too small I can barely fit the rubber band in there even stabbing it through with like a pencil and then even once it's in there it doesn't stay in there because that little nub is not tall enough so I'm gonna have to correct those little drill holes to make them a little longer that way the rubber band can fit in easy and clip and, and uh, hold this battery in place. Now it's not totally terrible because you can see the battery is held on three sides by components. So, but it, it makes noise and I don't like that. I want it to be solid. Um, so we're going to fix that. So two minor issues. Um, then, uh, let me see, what was the other one? Oh yeah, um, this one, it could be a minor issue, maybe... Uh, not so minor if you look at where these um, battery connectors are it's standard 2.5 millimeter apart holes right but what I didn't think about is this battery when you get it is charged it's live and that's a really close proximity to working with two wires that if they touch will short and so I'm thinking we should probably move these two holes further apart just for safety of people soldering it. I didn't have an issue, but other people might, and I don't want to take that chance. So that was the, the other minor thing. So, so far, three minor things. Now we come to the bigger thing, the sort of major thing, it, although it's not too major. Um, the pin that we used for the touch sensor that uh, is like pin zero here, GPIO zero. Um, that pin on this dev board, I guess has an alternate use. They use on the dev board, on this particular dev board, so it's not on all of these ESP32s, but this particular Lowland uh, 32 that we're using, um, it has a feature that I didn't see documented anywhere until I started looking for the problem I was having. Um, so let me explain the problem. Um, when I was uh, testing with this plugged in, the button works fine. When I was testing with it not plugged in and only on battery power, the button would automatically always show it was being touched. And that's why I printed that little text on the screen to show what the touch values are. And it is showing that it's being touched all the time. And that is when I researched it and I found out they use GPIO zero to monitor the battery. So that is the battery monitoring pin that they're using on this dev board. And so of course it's doing stuff and we can't use it for capacitive touch. Um, yep. Fortunately, we have another pin available that's touch sensitive, and so we just have to rewire it to not use pin zero, but use the other pin we have available, which is just a few pins down. So it's close enough, it shouldn't be that difficult to, to remake it. Um, and that's it. Everything else in this, this circuitry worked as planned. So it all the uh, uh, LEDs are doing what they're supposed to do, the touch pins work, this battery to um, uh, to dev board connection through the board is working. The power cutoff for the battery works. So all the little things are, are working. All the things I was really worried about are, are working. So that is um, awesome. 
And yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it turned out really nice. I, I really like the way that the silver and black look together with the white silk. So I think it, it turned out really nice. And one more close up of. Is it turning on? <laughs> Maybe. That battery might be dead now. <clears throat> but yeah, it looks really good. So that needs some um, some love in KiCad. And uh, yeah, PCB Way did a great job on the boards. Um, these issues are not their issues. They're definitely my issues. Um, but they're issues that we will fix. Um, so now, before we get into fixing them, um, let's switch gears a little bit and we'll talk about um, the other badge, the Cowboys vs. Dinosaurs badge. And that's where I was going to show the new badge shape. Here we go. So originally we were going to try to go with the, the um, 3000 Society logo um, as the badge shape. But that just really did not work as a good badge shape, being that we wanted to do stuff in the center and incorporate playing cards around the edges. So make this bigger. Um, and so this is the new badge shape that we have. So it's going to have that, that circle area in the middle where we can do the um, cowboys and dinosaurs playing poker um, scene that we wanted to do. Um, it has room for the playing cards along the top, which we can backlit the, the faces uh, or the, the uh, suits uh, of these different cards um, and text. And then you'll notice the 3000 Society logo here. Um, that is reversed because we can put it on the back. It'll still fit within this form factor on the back, even if the badge is not in that shape. And I think this works uh, as a good shape and it'll play well in Vegas being that it has the card theme to it so yeah sorry I gotta drink a lot <clears throat> sore throat from my cold <laughs> so yeah um, I'm gonna start on work on the center art and uh, cyber seal is working on card art and hopefully this makes it easier um, for them to to do that so we have that piece is in progress and then this badge is going to use the same uh, dev board um, it won't have a screen like the the blue team village badge but it'll use the same dev board and a lot of the same components um, just to make it easy to order all components that i need and to keep it consistent um, all right we have a suggestion um, 13 inch cards along the bottom edge of the Cowboys. Oh, the third. Oh, I see what you're saying. So just count this out to be 13 of them. Gotcha. What would that reference the 13? Is it just a bad luck thing? <laughs> oh, I see. Two through eight. So you could do those down there. Gotcha. Yeah, we could do that. And honestly, I, I wasn't like you can see these are all off center i wasn't doing uh close measurements or anything i just wanted to be able to do some card edges at the bottom um that's why i did that curved edge around the bottom this part will all be done in art so we can make that um at, at the bottom here like the card edges um have the the actual numbers or suits or something on them so yeah that that's a good idea to keep with the card theme So yeah, and then once we get this going, this is going to be the one I already ordered. Um, I think I got them in the little 10 millimeter spacers and um, the the screws that are all in that um, uh, nylon, so it's uh, not conductive. Um, this way we can just do drill holes on the front and back instead of the, the um, uh, pins, the header pins. Um, and we can actually screw it together because this one, um, for Sapien, since you weren't here last time, the back sideboard, um, we're not going to have any electronics on that on this badge. That is merely there 
to prevent all the electronics on the back of the front board from scraping against your chest, right? It is there to, to give you that um, uh, ease of, of use against your wearability so you're not having little components rubbing against you. So that's the smooth back badge um, uh, came out of the planning sessions a couple of weeks ago and I, I really like that idea. What that does mean though is that um, there's going to be a lot of through-hole stuff visible on the front of the badge, so we'll have to kind of work the art around that. But we've done that before, at least I've done that before with like the homecoming badge, where we have through-holes and we just kind of work the art around them to make them part of the art rather than uh, trying to just have ugly holes in the middle of artwork, right? Um, and if we do that, then we'll have all the pretty art on the front, the components on the back, LEDs, if we're doing through LEDs, we can do fold overs to still do the light through. So we can just fold them over like the Sailor Moon badge did. Um, that way you can still do the void windows and stuff like that without having to have the LED on a back board. This way everything is on the front board, but on the back side of it. And then the back board is, is just nice to, to hold on to um, the badge on, on you. So that's kind of the thought there so that is it for cowboys versus dinosaurs right now um, any questions on that one okay um, so yeah the other thing we were going to talk about is indiegogo as well as the um, uh, hacker warehouse we're going to try to sell with them and they have a list of um, items information that they need from us um, but being that the two people that I was hoping would make the call to talk through that stuff aren't here I'll follow up with them later and we'll skip those sections um, so I say let's dig into um, what we need to do to fix this camera badge and it'll give people an idea of how to work with um, KiCad and so uh, let's take a look where was I so the first thing I was gonna do I know this one footprint needs to be updated for the screen and this is one that I made myself so I'm gonna go into the footprint editor here and trying to make it to where my face is not gonna block the screen but we can still see a lot get over there Okay, that'll work. All right, so let's see, local, and yeah, this is the guy. So what we can see here is this is the footprint, and most of it is just these holes here, these um, plated through holes, they're called, um, and then the text that is around them. Now, what this um, is for is... Um, oh, uh, switch to show my uh, um, desktop again real quick it's for this guy for this little screen um, it is the um, the GC 9A01 screen now you can probably tell by looking at this already just eyeballing it you can see this looks different than what I was just showing on the screen these little pinholes are closer to the edge that is what I had wrong and what makes me angry is I know I had it right I did exact measurements but then when I was moving something over I must have had all of these selected at the same time and moved them because when I look at this this should only be I think one and a half millimeters and it's 3.8 millimeters from the edge and that right there is the whole problem we gotta fix <laughs> just moving those over um, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna confirm our measurement and so for that I use a handy tool like this one um, I got this for like 20 bucks on on Amazon so it's not an expensive tool so we'll turn it on and zero it and it's set for millimeters and then what I'm doing is measuring from the center of that pin to the edge of the board 
and it is yep 1.5 millimeters so that's what I want is 1.5 millimeters not the 3.8 and so that's what we're gonna reset this guy to and I already did all the other measurements and they all seem to be working right it was just this one measurement that got screwed up at some point so we're gonna fix that now and so we'll show you how we do that so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these text elements and I'm gonna move them to the other side and maybe a little further And you'll notice the text is all backwards, and that's on purpose because this is on the um, back side of the PCB. So this is what they call back silk. So the back silk is on the back side. So if you were looking at it in this front view of the back side, it would look reversed like this. Okay, and now what we can do is select all of these. And then I am going to make it move, uh, I think, half a millimeter at a time at first. So we go one, two, that's one. I think that might be enough, but let's double check. So I'm getting the measurement tool. And we're still at 2.3. Okay. Okay, we'll get the measurement tool again. And I might have to go with a different, yeah, this is like 1.8, so that's not going to be enough. All right. So I'm going to have to bring this down to like 0.1. And then, oops, no, I don't want the measurement tool. I want the select tool. And we'll select these. Get the M to move. I moved it 3 because when I measured it said 1.8, so I'm hoping this gets us to 1.5. 1 1.50, but it's off. All right, hold on. Did I end up shifting it a bit this way? 0 this way and unfortunately that is the the tedious part of this is the measuring 3.79 so that is a little bit off but all these should be exactly 2.54 2.54 whenever I'm moving stuff I always double check all the measurements it's like that old adage uh, about measuring twice and only cutting four times instead of five. <laughs> At least that's the way it works for me. All right. So that looks good. And let's look at this again. And we'll go all the way to the edge. I want us to this center line here, but it's a little off. All right. So. I believe there is move exactly. And so with move exactly, what I have is X, Y, and Z, so I can give it that exact motion that I need. And just to give you an exaggerated example, here's X. And you see it does that, but I can control Z it. Um, come back here. So 
so this would be the y is the up and down and so I believe the y is what we needed at first so let's take a look at what we need for y again oops wrong center all right so and we'll go to the center of it so we got uh, I gotta get the angle just right there it is 3.910 all right and then this one Three point eight six zero. So I am too tired to do this math in my head. So nine one zero minus eight six zero. It's oh wow. So it's zero five. So we're going to go zero two five would be half of that. So 0 0.025, it needs to go up. So that would be negative. Okay. So that is the math I'm doing on this, is I'm going to select this. I'm going to do the move exactly. And then for this, it's going to be negative 0 0.025. And now if we check it, hopefully I'm not boring you guys with this. We got you, man. We're following you. Okay, so now we got 835. How is that not? <laughs> I'm not crazy, right? This is looking the same to me. All right, let's go from the edge of this line here. Where's the 90? Okay, 875. 3.875. Three point seven six five is still off. Six five three point eight seven five. Maybe I just went the wrong way with it. Let me get my calculator out again. Uh, eight seven five minus seven six five is one ten difference. So that would be 55. Yeah, so I'm thinking it should be minus 5.5. Five. Okay. All right, let's try it again. I, <laughs> I'm punchy. All right, we got them all selected. Right click, move exactly. I think I'm going the wrong direction. I am. Yep, that's the problem. Undo. And now we'll go move it again. That's what it was. So negative. Did not move it the way I wanted to. I wanted it to move it positive. And that's why I screwed up the other one too. All right, move exactly. Let's just get rid of this old minus sign. There we go. And now this one at 90, we got 820, 3.820. 3.820, okay, so it's exact measurements here. Now we gotta look at this distance. 
and this should be 1.5 and it is one that's fine I think that's because the angle no, zero yeah 1.51 one. <laughs> that point one I'm not gonna worry too much about that I no, I am because I have OC fucking D all right we're gonna move it again all right move exactly <laughs> where are ya all right zero Zero point zero one zero. Okay, now where is my measurements? One point five. Yay. Okay, <laughs> so now we have the holes exactly where they need to be. And I just move the text around a little. And this text will be covered by the screen. It's only really there to be helpful if you're uh, assembling it. I like to make sure you're putting it in the right way. Although I don't see how you could screw it up except put it on the wrong side of the board. So, um, but yeah, that should work. Let me save that. And let's just look at this PCB editor now. And let's get rid of every thing that's in our way here, or at least a lot of it. I got rid of the front and the back copper. And so you can see here, this is the, the footprint so now that we've updated it, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say update footprint and I want to update the selected one, meaning if I had like um, an LED footprint that I was going to modify, um, I could update all of them that match that LED footprint, it would update them all. But in this case, I only have one, so that's all that I care about and I'm going to so update the selected footprint and here we have our options so I can remove text that's not in the library I don't care about that uh, update reset text layers we are going to want to do that because we moved around the text update resize text styles positions I'm not too worried about that um, fabrication attributes that's probably something we want and then I'm gonna say update actually size position was here let me do that again update there we go <laughs> and then we close it and we can see all of our text has moved and this guy properties I don't want him visible bam then I think this one we had moved it over here and uh, oops wrong way oh it's got that stupid property to it uh, keep upright I don't want you upright I want you upside down there we go and the reason I want it upside down is this particular PCB is upside down. So, I lose you guys yet? Are you following me? <laughs> right here. Right All right, here. so that fixed this part of the PCB. Now we have those other things that we need to fix as well. One of them is, if we look at this, these um, uh, rubber band holder connectors 
those are going to be easy and I don't want to take the time to do it on here tonight. It's just a matter of these are graphic lines and you just move them, make them bigger. So I'm not going to waste our time on that. But the one that's really interesting is I'm going to have to remap a pin. Let me bring my copper back. Uh, bring this copper back. Because if you remember, I was telling you this one, that's, uh, let's see, zero, where's zero? Here it is, GPIO is zero. That's the one that I'm using as a touch pin. So if we trace a zero all the way around here, it goes to this on, on this side. Um, we can't use that as a touch pin because when we're running on battery, it's using it for something else. But you'll notice this one has a little X next to it this pin is not being used and it is also capacitive touch enabled so what I need to do is move this over to here and then in order to do that I'm gonna to have to reroute this one so I'm gonna make this trace come up and around the back that way this trace can then meet up here and go this way that way I'm not having to retrace the whole board right but the first thing I gotta do is update the schematic and the net list and then we will do that so let's get rid of this we already saved that um, let me save this and close it and we'll come back to it let's go to our schematic so in our schematic we saw touch 4 was this guy um, this was pin 13 and it was touch 0 that we were using or, or touch 1 rather on pin 0 um, and so what we're going to have to do is rework this. So I could rename all the components, but I figure we'll just keep t calling it touch one, even though it's going to be touch four, um, just because it makes it easier. Uh, the way I wrote all the code <laughs> for this, I don't want to have to redo all that. Um, so basically we have over here, you see pin zero is going to connect to here. So we have to update this is no longer going to be pin zero. So the first thing that we need to do is get rid of this X. No, I wanted to cut you. There we go. Put you over there. All right, and so now I'll copy this guy and we're gonna make him 13. Now what this guy is, he's just a, uh, a label that allows me to connect things in the schematic without having to cross over lines and it makes it draw nice and neat and so now I'm gonna connect this with a wire so now I have 13 here and then what I can do with this guy I will pull him off so move him here and then we can take this guy and put him there bam and actually I don't need him so we'll just get rid of him so we're getting rid of that guy and we're replacing it with this guy so now I have 13 here well what else do I have to change for that I have to change this so we're gonna make him 13 bam so now that's 13 coming into here well then this I had renamed this based on the front connector um, so instead of zero, just to keep things sane, we'll call him 13 as well. All right, so that should, yeah, that should work all of that magic. So I don't think anything else needs to change. Um, so I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to do an electrical rules check. Okay, we had no errors and no warnings. So that means I did it right. If I had screwed it up, it would have warned me there. So um, that's kind of how we uh, work the, the schematic. And now we're going to see how the schematic ties into the PCB. And this is where I'm going to export a net list. And I'm going to do it in KiCad format. And it's going to say, what do you want to name it? I'm going to name it the same thing I did last time, camera badge. Click save. And it overwrites it. Okay, and let me click save on this again. We can close it. 
Now we open up our PCB editor. And the first thing I'm going to do just to make my life easy, um, knowing that this is going to get disconnected and that one will get connected in a minute, I'm going to go ahead and delete that guy now. <laughs> delete that little part of the trace. And we're going to have to retrace them anyway because of this. So we could actually delete it all the way back here. And you can see where these traces didn't totally line up either. But we'll fix that in a minute. I just finish deleting that. Okay. So this is still saying it wants to be on pin zero, right? So now I can do this. I can say import a netlist. Now I can link the footprints and then I can say replace footprints with those, which I'm not going to delete. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do any of this stuff. Basically, I'm just updating the net list. So I'm going to load and test it. And I have errors, which is normal because um, I have certain things that don't have footprints assigned. And so that's where we have these errors. There's no footprints uh, assigned for those. But that's it, and so I'm going to update the PCB with it. And then I'll close it. And now what you'll notice is this little wire line is now connecting here. And you see how the zero has the X there? It didn't really make any other changes on the board because it didn't need to, right? So now we have this as looking for pin 13. And then when we come up here, that is F13, which is my defined label coming over here, and it will connect via the header pins. So now all we got to do is retrace these cables, and that's actually not that hard. So I just want to see what track width I was using on this. Uh, where's my E? There it is. So 0.4, okay. So when I go to trace, just make sure I'm using the point four again. So these are parts of that new um, footprint. Okay, and then this is where I was saying we had to delete this guy, right? And reroute him around. And that lets me run this guy, oops wrong way. How did I end up on that copper? I want this copper. Hit the wrong button I guess. And so this guy is going to come here. And actually let me, I got to move this up out of the way a little bit. It needs to go a little further up so that I can make room for this other one. Yeah, because these holes moved up, that's why I'm going to have to move a bunch of these around. Alright, so come back here. We'll start with this guy. Okay. You guys are awfully quiet on the badge team. Still with me? Paying attention, Captain. <laughs> Where are you at? Alright, and then we'll finish this one out. Delete him. So you can see, Kai Cat is not that difficult. It is a bit tedious, 
at times but you see it it'll warn you if you're trying to do something that you shouldn't do and I don't like how close I am there so I'm gonna escape out of that and try that one again A little closer to this one. Yeah, that clears it now. All right. And so, yeah, those traces are done now. So I had to reroute them a little bit there. And now we do have some traces on this side we have to mess with. So if we come here, you'll see we have these traces here and the ground trace. And actually the ground will be uh, caught by when I refill this pattern. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So let me make sure we're on the right thing here. Connect these. Okay. That should work for that. I don't think there was anything else. All right, so now what I'm going to do, uh, click on, no, don't want that. I want this, yeah. No, that's the silk. <laughs> There's so many layers on this thing, it's hard to get. Ah, there it is, just the thing I want. Okay, so this is the hatched um, ground plate. Yeah, so that's still looking good. All right. So I am going to right click on that and we will fill all zones. And now if we come over here, what we see is when it refilled all the zones, it automatically moved this zone around the new footprint areas. And for this ground, it automatically connected it properly to the ground. So that's why I said I didn't have to move that one. When you refill the zones, it does that for you. And so yeah, this is all filled in. Let's see, where do we have ground? That's a ground. Yeah, so there's a couple more things I need to do. Like we, we talked about, um, uh, was it this one for the battery? Yeah, that's where the battery connects in. I was gonna make that a little bit wider, but honestly, that's the same process I just did of upgrading, um, updating rather, that footprint here. I'll just update this footprint to make it a little wider and reroute some stuff around it as needed. So I don't think I need to walk through that, but that is what I wanted to show you is because I know a lot of you are new to, to KaiCAD and um, how you do updates in it um, or, or initial badge stuff in it, it is not that difficult. And so you can see I made um, several changes fairly quickly here. I have a couple more to make, but I'll be ready to order more prototypes of this board um, with those corrections made um, probably uh, tomorrow. That's pretty cool. Yep. All right. And then, um, yeah, then we get into code and the, the code is, um, uh, is always the fun part because uh, the badge, it, the hardware only does what the code tells it to do. So I have been doing a lot of work on the code for this, um, camera badge. I know, um, there's other people working on code too. My code is more about, functionality of light the lights and and make the screen do things and stuff like that and we have other people on the blue team village team that are actually going to do like the puzzles and the other code um, the reason i mention it to you guys on my team is because this code we could use that um, just strip out the, the display stuff and we can use it as the starter for our badge code because it's going to use the same type of LEDs, it's going to use the same type of ESP chip. So a lot of the boilerplate stuff we can reuse out of here. And uh, um, yeah, so we can walk through that uh, another night. Um, where was, ah, there it is. 
Um, but yeah, I made it kind of easy. And I know we've, we've talked before about the scripts that I put in there for the Arduino. Um, but it works well. And one thing I wanted to, to kind of show you guys was on the on the badge when you actually um, click the switch for this it charges this on its own so basically it's charging the the badge the oh shoot I'm not showing my desktop <laughs> I hate when I do that let me show the desktop yeah so what I was saying was um, when it's plugged in and the battery is turned in the on position it will um, charge the badge so you can see it's waiting to charge something and when you flip it it's going to charge something um, or it is charging something and I haven't figured out yet how to read the the badge voltage or even if I can that may be something that I would have to wire into another pin but we can look at that for our badge I'm not sure how important that is because I have tried fully charging and fully discharging these batteries on this ESP board and it works well so um, I'm not too worried about that um, but yeah it would be nice to know like what percentage is the battery at right now <laughs> but yeah this will be the same kind of components on our badge yeah even thanks showing kind of a like low battery status is cool yeah, yeah, I just haven't figured out how to do that, and I don't know if there is a way to do it on the dev board itself. Um, I know some of the ESP dev boards have that. This one I don't think does, um, because it's not built inherently into the ESP chip. It's something that would have had to be built into the dev board for it. And if it's not built into the dev board, then that's something we would have to build into like an analog pin to read the voltage. And honestly, this badge doesn't have any pins to spare, <laughs> I don't think. I mean, we might have an input-only analog pin that we could uh, retool for that, but I don't know if it's, it's worth like it. Pain in the ass. Yeah, it is for what it gives. It's like, it is the juice worth the squeeze, right? It seems like a lot of work for not that great a, a feature. So... All right, well, let's see, who else do we have on? It's the same guys we had before, same people, okay. Yeah, I'll follow up with um, with the other team members on um, the Indiegogo because I wanna start the Indiegogo campaign um, uh, like end of April, beginning of May. Um, even if we just have some sketches and we start getting excitement around it, I want to get the campaign site stood up. Maybe not kick off the campaign then, but start getting traction. That way people know we're working on this, the um, badges, the, the Cowboys versus Dinosaur badge and the um, Godzilla versus badge. Now the Blue Team Village for this camera badge I'm showing, they use um, uh, Eventbrite, I believe. I think they'll probably use that again this year. Um, that's what they've used in years past. And so they'll have announcements for that. So just for anyone watching this video, this Blue Team Village badge is not one that will be sold on my Indiegogo. I'm talking about for the, the Cowboys vs. Dinosaurs and for the Godzilla vs. And possibly for the Hello Kitty, if we get a Hello Kitty SAO or something going. Because someone told me it is like a, a 50th anniversary or something for that. Yeah. So yeah, we should probably do something like, uh, even if it's just a simple SAO, we should do something Hello Kitty. I think it would be very, very funny to have Hello Kitty fighting Godzilla. <laughs> that would be. And we can make enough Hello Kitties that we can give them out separate and include a, a few randomly with the Godzillas. <laughs> so... All right, so I think that's about it for tonight. Um, trying to think of what else we needed to talk about. I know, um, yeah, we talked Indiegogo, we talked uh, 
Hacker Warehouse. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else. Now, Cowboys vs. Dinosaurs, I guess I'll just talk about the time frame for this one. The um, 3000 Society Con that um, this is going to be used at is happening Memorial Day weekend. Um, so, what's that? Six weeks away? <laughs> so really that one we have to get art and major badge design done in um, the next I don't know 10 to 15 days we'll say because I gotta have them on order um, with enough time that even if I expedite shipping we'll get them in time uh, so that that's the key there is that one is time sensitive now we'll have another run that we'll do for defcon to sell these but for the original con that it's designed for that con is happening memorial day so we will need to have at least 30 of them uh working and ready to go for memorial day 30 isn't too bad though no but that's the the 3000 society con um uh, those guys, for the most part, or, and, and girls, I guess, are, are not hardware hackers. Um, they're not going to want to build their own badge. Um, this is their actual conference badge, so they're going to need to be 30 fully assembled and working. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where we need some extra time to be soldering and coding and whatnot. And that's why these little things were... Like we can reuse this camera code a lot of it and then just make things unique i think that um, will really help us uh, let's see i think the 3k society com badge so have some kind of og marker on them oh yeah i think um when we do the second run of the badges for these for defcon um there will be some uniqueness to it um and i don't know if you guys remember when i did um the uh, Godzilla versus Blade Runner. I know I have a Godzilla theme, but when I did that badge, um, I actually made two versions of the art. The badge itself was the same, and it functioned the same, but the art was different. On the um, the police car uh, for Blade Runner, on the 3000 Society Con, it said 3000 Society on the side of the car, and for the DEFCON badges, it said DEFCON on the side of the card. So we can do something like that for the Cowboys vs. Dinosaurs to where we make the badge runs unique um, to where we will be able to tell which ones were done for the 3K Con and which ones were done later for DEFCON. That's cool. Yeah. That makes sense. Exciting. Yep. All right, any questions from Badge Team? Oh, did right I? Off the bat, I, I, I enjoyed you going through the, the uh, I don't know that the last year we did it, that detail, that was pretty cool. Yeah, and, and we could do more of that because I know people were wanting to learn how to do the badge stuff in KiCad. And I think last year I would do that all in between meetings and then just show you the results. So I figured this year we get more into the the detail and show you how it's done. So yeah, that was cool. Was someone else saying something and I cut them off? I said um, I did finish the Mothra art. So oh, I nice. Get you a picture of that. I just you'll probably have to go in and um, crispen up the like blackness because it is just white and black but my marker was kind of dying towards the end so you might have to go in and like yeah i can i can do extra that black. so um what you can do oops that's not the right one because that's for the Godzilla versus badge right i yeah. gave you access to all the repos so you should be able to just go right in and you don't have to worry about like git on the command line just like go into the github on the web page like here right and then go into the art directory and then you can add a file right here and it'll let you upload a file right into here so if you want to just upload the files here 
then I can modify them as needed. All right? Perfect. I will do that tonight. I think my GitHub auto logged me out, so I'll have to remember my password. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. Well, I think with that, um, we will uh, wrap it up for tonight. And uh, I look forward to uh, another good meeting uh, next week. Um, and hopefully we'll have a lot more progress to share, um, especially on the Cowboys versus Dinosaurs, because like I said, I, I'm going to be working hard on the um, artwork and the edge cuts, and we'll have some preliminary circuit design done in, in KiCad by then, um, so we can review all that. Hey, that was looking good, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and so Safi, maybe you can work on a, a puzzle for the um, the DEF CON version of either Cowboys vs. Dinosaurs or the um, Godzilla vs. Um, I don't think the 3000 Society is going to be too worried about puzzles, so there is less of a rush to get like a, a software-based puzzle onto that one. But definitely for DEF CON, we'll want to include some puzzles and... I know you did a good job on, on the one last year, so if you wanted to start thinking of ideas on what we can do, um, now's the time, and then we can play with it. Yep, no, that would be great. I think at the specs of the, the ESP32. So yeah. Kind of constraints. Yeah, I mean, it is very similar to the one we were using. It just has uh, fewer pins, um, but I believe in the repo, which you should be a part of, um, if you uh, look at like the reference parts, uh, yeah. which is a subdirectory under ESP, I have like all the details on the Lowland light. That's this guy. So we okay. have, yeah, you'll see several PDFs here. Um, so okay. that's the Lowland light one is the one that we're using. So right. I appreciate that. I'll look at it. Okay, cool. All right, well, with that, we will wrap for this evening. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending and for everyone that was watching. And uh, we will see you all next week. Talk to you all later. Good night, man. Good night. Yeah.